The legendary climb of the Koppenberg is situated here, just to the edge of the village of Melden, not far from Udenada. And since 1975, it's been part of the fixtures and fittings of the Tour of Flanders, but before that, was used by many, many riders whilst out training. But famously, the climb was excluded after the 1987 crash and subsequent running over of the Jesper Skibby halfway up the climb. Now, it is a relatively short climb, but what it lacks in vertical ascent, it's only 62 metres high, the Steinhardt, or Stoneway, more than makes up for it with its ferocious gradient, narrow width, high size, and of course, these large and bone-jarring cobblestones. Like there we are, just at the foot of the climb. Now, 600 metres long in total, with an average gradient of 10%, and that doesn't seem too bad. But when you factor in the steepest pitch of 22%, that's where this climb has gained its notoriety. This steep section is an absolute brute. Over the years, as many riders will have walked up the Koppenberg as ridden, and that includes in Deronda itself, where a combination of crashes, missed gears, and even a lack of traction in the wet causes riders to get off and shoulder their bikes. But it's probably most famous in 1987 when Danish rider Jesper Skibby crashed, fell off his bike and then got run over by one of the race lead cars. Yeah, this is about where the spot that Jesper Skibby fell off. Again, 1987, slipped off his bike, feet still clipped into the, the toe straps and rather than kind of try and drive past, a race organizer's car rode over his entire bike. And obviously that led to the climb being deemed too dangerous and was actually excluded from the Tour of Flanders for a full 15 years before being reinstated in 2002. Imagine if you'd managed to unclip. That would have changed the whole course of history for the Tour of Flanders. You'd have been all right, mate. You'd have never come in. So clips and straps. With the steepest, gnarliest part of the climb done, it's not quite over. Although the gradient backs off a little bit, it does kick up again sharply at the end of the climb. And as you'd expect in Belgium, it's super exposed over the top, so it can be really, really windy. So it is worth keeping a little bit in reserve to press on over the top. Top advice there, Lasty. But I hear you ask, who is the fastest? Well, Strava says the fastest guy is Dries Devenens, with a quite incredible one minute and 59 seconds. But for the ladies, it's Elisa Longo Borghini with three minutes and nine seconds. And in true fashion, we're gonna see what time we're gonna set. But first, we need a bit of a warm up. So, it's now time for one monster of a Flemish Berg. The three strongest members of the GCNT about to tackle it. Tom Lars leading the way, there can be no man more suited to paving the way to this cobbled climb than the brick himself. The enthusiasm is already beginning to show. Lasty is dropping the hammer and, and he's dropping Matt Stevens too. Lasty looking smooth in the saddle, powerful. Matt, not. Matt having done everything he possibly can to hinder Simon on his quest to become the KOM on this iconic climb, swings over and leaves him to bridge the gap. And bridge the gap he does, storming past Lasty like he stood still. In fact, in fact he is stood still, next to his bike, feigning a mechanical problem. So it's now just Richardson against the elements, against the cobbles, against the 22% maximum gradients of this iconic road, which has seen legends such as Museo, Bonin, Cancellara and Lloyd fly up in the first group. So what does this man have left in his legs? He's looking powerful. He's putting his cyclocross skills to good use as he navigates his way to the top. 
and he's over the worst of it now. The gradient has eased and the end is in sight, both for Richardson and Stevens in very different ways. One final monstrous 200 watt surge. And he's there, across the finish line, pain etched across his face. Oh my final hour. Oh. Let's see how he did. Not my finest hour. So there you go, two videos for the price of one. Iconic climb of the Koppenberg, which is just stretching out behind us. And what an absolutely superb climb that was. Not quite as superb though, was the second video we got free there, how not to do an iconic climb lead out. Go, 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 sorry mate. No, and to be fair lads, I'm afraid I didn't really finish the job either, but uh, hey ho. Well, Two minutes, 27 seconds was the official time. Same time as Michal Kwiatkowski, 18th place so far at the time of going to press on Strava. Indeed it is. Good Come job. out. Well, thank you very much, guys. Come out and try and beat it. I'm sure you can. Now, if you want to see some more iconic climb videos, then why not click up there? We've got a great one on the Colla della Finestra in Italy. Completely different to this one, but nonetheless an amazing climb. Or if you want to know how to train for short, steep climbs so that when you do come out to Koppenberg, take it off your bucket list, you will be in tip-top shape. We've got a great video just down there. And to subscribe to GTN, GTN, GCN, it is cold out here in Flanders, how about clicking on this young man, renamed as the GCN Wattage Bazooka. Click just there.